Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. At 3.39 a.m. on September 20, 2016, the 911 call center received a panicked and emotional call from a man at the Sunrise Apartments. 911, When police officers arrived, they discovered Fidel Lopez crying next to the body of his girlfriend Maria Namath. With blood splattered on the walls and the floor, a damaged sliding glass door, and the presence of body tissue, it was evident that this apartment was the scene of one of the most horrific crimes some of these officers have ever seen, and Fidel Lopez was hysterical and appeared to have no clue what happened. Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more stories. Maria Namath, 31 years old, and Fidel Lopez had been together for about a year. Namath was just divorced following an eight-year marriage. Lopez was living with the mother of his two young children when he met Namath at a club and the two hit it off. They moved in together as their relationship progressed, first in Hollywood, then with Lopez's family in Hialeah, while they searched for a new house. A week before the murder, the couple had moved into a new condominium at Colonnade Residences in Sunrise. There, Namath served as the leasing manager. Lopez, who was employed as a mechanic at a truck stop in Davie, returned home to Namath after a hard day on a Saturday. He informed investigators that she cooked chicken with rice and beans for supper before they traveled to Hialeah to see Lopez's mother. Lopez said that he and Namath drank two margaritas at a Chili's restaurant near their residence later that evening. They then purchased a bottle of tequila from ABC Fine Wine and Spirits and brought it back to their flat. Lopez said that they had not yet purchased furniture for the unit, so they used a couple of packaging boxes as a table. They chopped limes and used salt while pouring themselves shots while listening to music on a mobile phone. The pair had consumed half of the bottle of 1800 Reposado tequila when a horrible event occurred. Lopez told authorities that he smashed the sliding glass door, punched holes in the wall, and ripped out the closet door. He said he was too inebriated to recall what had made him so upset, but he claimed he and Namath reconciled and engaged in rough sex in the closet. They found themselves in the bathroom where she said she needed to vomit. I just remember seeing glass on the floor. I really don't remember when I broke it or why did I break it, he told investigators. Lopez said that he had a cigarette outdoors before seeing that Namath had stopped breathing. The detectives informed Lopez that his statement did not explain why Namath's intestines were pulled out. I think there's a point that you're trying to block out because it's killing you right now, it's burning you up because of what happened, one of the investigators said. You have to be honest and help us put the pieces together from point A to point B. That time in between, something happened from the closet to the bathroom that you're leaving out. Lopez revised his version of events after being questioned for hours about what Namath may have said or done to provoke the brutal attack. He informed investigators that he felt upset after hearing Namath mention her ex-husband's name twice during intercourse. According to authorities, he then wrecked the apartment and returned to the closet where Namath was comatose but still alive. According to authorities, he pushed a beer bottle, a flat iron for hair, and both fists inside her body. He inserted his arm up to his elbow and took out her bowels. She was calling me the other dude's name. She was confusing me with him, Lopez said. If I was sober, maybe I would have just left the apartment. But I was drunk. Lopez said that he brought Namath to the bathroom and applied water on her face, but she did not regain consciousness. Before fear set in, he cleaned the blood from his hands and stepped outside for a cigarette. He told detectives, I was so f and nervous, man, he told investigators. I wasn't thinking, man. I wasn't thinking. After admitting to investigators, he reportedly questioned one of them, as captured on video, I know I'm going to jail, but I have two kids, you know. How many years do you think this is going to cost me? Richard St. Croix, a neighbor, told authorities that he heard a lady scream as he walked from the parking lot to his apartment building the night of the killing. Cheryl Lawrence and her daughter Ebony Campbell, who resided in the unit below Lopez and Namath, reported being awoken by loud sounds originating from the apartment above them. We heard noise above us like banging and we felt, oh, they're probably moving stuff because it was that loud. But then there was one heavy thud that we heard in the ceiling that we thought our fan was going to cave in. Another neighbor, Cheryl Futterman, reported being awoken by a couple's argument about 1 a.m. that night. 
It was some type of exchange back and forth, and I thought that it would have woken up other people as well, Futterman told the authorities. It was over quickly, and I fell right back asleep. Lopez was still inside the police interrogation room when he was arrested and handcuffed at 1.36 p.m., about 10 hours after he had phoned 911. He was transported to the Broward Main Jail. In 2014, Lopez was charged with disorderly intoxication. First at six, mutilation murder. CBS 4 News getting a new look at some of the evidence against a man accused of killing his girlfriend and disemboweling her body. You have the right to remain silent. Sunrise police sat with suspected killer Fidel Lopez for hours inside a police interrogation room in the hours after Lopez's girlfriend, Maria Nemeth, was found dead inside their Sunrise apartment last September. At first, Lopez said the pair engaged in rough sex and Nemeth became ill after drinking some tequila and she went in the bathroom. Lopez told detectives he found her in the bathroom later. I was screaming for, for help. Right. Is that what you were screaming is help? Yeah, I was screaming for help. Lopez called 911, but when police arrived, they found what appeared to be an extremely bloody crime scene. Police say Lopez eventually admitted that he became a monster when Nemeth called out another man's name during sex and he disemboweled her. This is Detective Joff A. Kitchen, the Sunrise Police Department. This is a crime scene video taken by Sunrise Police after Nemeth's body was found. We're conducting a death investigation. The video shows the apartment. It shows an open bottle of tequila, a smashed sliding glass door, and a hole in the wall. It also shows so much blood that we cannot put it on television. Police took photos of Fidel Lopez after the incident. They saw dried blood on his leg. But in those initial hours after Nemeth's death, Lopez insisted that he couldn't truly remember what happened to her. I was strong just like her. Okay. I was strong just like her. You know, I would love to tell you every details. You know, and I'm, I'm doing my best right now. I understand. And of course, police say that later in that interview, Lopez admitted flying into a rage and attacking Nemeth. We're also learning from these transcripts of jail phone calls that Lopez made that he told family members he is haunted by Nemeth's death, that every time he closes his eyes, he thinks about what happened. Now, Lopez is charged with murder and sexual battery. Prosecutors will uh, try to go after him on the death penalty. Live in Fort Lauderdale, Kerry Codd, CBS 4 News. Fidel Lopez pleaded guilty to Maria Namus' murder to avoid the death penalty. He hoped to secure a 50-year sentence, but prosecutors rejected the deal. A South Florida man who was convicted of a particularly brutal murder learned today how he will pay for that crime. CBS 4's Joan Murray has the story and joins us now live from the Broward County Courthouse in Fort Lauderdale. Joan. Well, Eugene, two families forever united in grief were together in a courtroom here today. The family of the woman viciously murdered and her convicted killer who will now go to prison for life. We're all devastated over this. We're all devastated. It was a gruesome crime. The murder of Maria Nemeth, whose mutilated body was found in the bloodstained Sunrise apartment she shared with her boyfriend, Fidel Lopez, back in September 2015. Lopez, charged with her murder, pleaded guilty and before his sentence apologized through a translator to the victim's family. Today, I, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to fulfill this, this conviction, to, to do the conviction because I know that what I did has to be paid, and and I and I'm, I'm and I agree. I agree that I will pay with my life, the, the life that I took. Espero que algún día me puedan perdonar. To Maria's family, I I ask for forgiveness. Um, I hope they can find it, and I hope that one day. I don't know they, that they can, they can forgive me. Lopez's mother, who described him as a loving son, also apologized to Nebeth's family. We like to apologize in the whole sense of the word. We are sorry. Everything that has happened to them, has, in a way, has happened to us as well. Police say Lopez became enraged when Nemeth uttered another man's name during an intimate moment. Nemeth's family told the judge they remained devastated and have only Maria's memory to cling to. If I had to summarize the life of our Maria Lisette, it would be very difficult to express it in a few lines. I just want to tell you all that she was and will continue to be a model of affection, effort, perseverance, and love of humanity. I am be honest, um, in, in my almost 23 years on this bench, um, I've never been left without words to say. Fidel Lopez will spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. 
What he did to Maria Namath was absolutely brutal. How could he claim to love her and commit such a horrible act against her? Maria Namath did not deserve what happened to her. The person she trusted and loved would turn out to be the one to betray her. My condolences to her friends and family. May you continue to heal from this tragedy. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.